Hello and welcome. This is going to be an audio version of my poetry book, The Reckoning. This book is dedicated to all of the young girls that cry at night and don't know why, who feel things too deeply and are shunned because of it, whose brain overanalyzes every millisecond of every interaction with another person, for every girl who feels like she will either always be not enough or too much for anyone to love her. For every girl living with any type of mental illness, condition, trauma, or even those who have just had an overwhelming amount of stress because life can be really, really hard. You are worth more than you can ever imagine. Never downgrade yourself to fit the standards of others. Be all that you are and feel all that you feel. Leave those who cannot handle this behind. You have just as much of a right to be here as anyone else. Don't allow others to alienate you just because they aren't compassionate or brave enough to try to understand you. And lastly, you are a force of nature. Each day there is a war inside our minds. Every time we make a choice to take a step forward, it is a victory. And when you're moving, that means you can no longer remain at rock bottom. So you've got to keep looking up. Magic is real. And it is found in the hearts of those children who still believe that maybe they can change the world. Part 1. Rehearsal. Welcome to the inner workings of my mind. Nothing really makes sense, except that it seems we're all just souls, given these human genes. What if we're souls in fur or in skin, and all that separates us is the case we are in? Hearts can feel close, although their shells are far. Could it be that our body is not all that we are? We long for connection that can touch deep inside. Our exterior shell is just where we hide. Maybe we all get to be our genuine selves and be free in the blackness of dreams where you don't need eyes to see. I pray that you go through my work with an open mind and an open heart. So without further ado, it's time that we start. Prologue Authenticity Noun Undisputed credibility, not counterfeit or copied, conforming to fact and therefore worthy of belief. I am finally ready to tell my story. I'm not quite sure yet what this will look like, but I know that above everything else, I focused on one main aspect, staying authentic, learning to be unapologetically myself accepting that I am deserving of the light that I can give to others, embracing the mindset that I am worthy of healing fully, and that it's okay to collect and recycle the fragments of me from my journey that have been left scattered along the way, to give purpose to the pain that has made me capable of so much more than I ever would have been without it. I am finally reclaiming my power and putting it out there for all to see. This book is my journey thus far. This is my heart on my sleeve. Reckoning. Noun. Settlement of amount due. An appraisal or judgment. Act 1. I just don't want to forget this night don't want my brain to erase this feeling, sobbing in my bed completely broken, with all these demons I'll never start healing. Every step to get here has been an uphill climb, rising higher than the clouds, but it still just ain't my time. The longing for something that I cannot describe is why the racing in my mind will likely never subside. Questioning if it's something I said because it usually is each time. After all my good intentions, emotions feeling like a crime. We're hiding who we are. Tell me how to get like this. All may be fair in love and war, 
but even Judas betrayed with a kiss. I'm grabbing the mic. Tonight's the night that I'm poised to explain to you briefly. Everyone struggles. We all go through pain, but some hide distress more discreetly. The bumps in the road unmask the karma we're owed until we rupture, then rebuild completely. So, yeah, this is my story, told by looking through the rear view, interpreted through the lens of a long overdue mental breakdown, and trying to look onwards with eyes full of love and not fear, even when there seemed to be no light at the end of any tunnels. Joined there at my rock bottom, then out of hell we climbed, even when I couldn't see you were right there by my side. We've been each other's eyes and ears, but we're much better heart to heart. I stand back and point at you when I'm asked my favorite part. I would have endured through so much more if that was what it took to make it right. Bloody, bruised, and broken, I'd still stand up and fight. I learned to love me while learning to love you, albeit from far away. There was not a single hurdle stopping me from standing here today. I think the universe fights for a heart lit aflame, cleansed anew or tested with fire. My soul's on your team no matter what transpires. My heart's in your hands to do with what you please. The world made me seem problematic, but you love me with ease. Thank you for being here to listen to my book, My Art my handwritten copy of years and years worth of emotions. The purpose of my work is to make you feel, think deeper, or remind you that you are not alone, no matter what you're struggling with. You are never alone. Each day is a challenge that provides us with opportunities to choose to break or choose to grow. Whoever said that not quitting when it's you versus the world, battling the war inside your head, but you need to try and walk around looking okay or other people will be uncomfortable. Whoever said that that's not a superpower? Maybe there's a part of me that knew to self-destruct on cue. Two years ago, I didn't know half of what I now do. There's still a hope alive in me that wishes that you knew the mountains I have moved to earn myself this view. And from where I'm standing, I don't see one option that makes sense. Maybe the right in all of this is just inside my head. Been clawing at the walls, trying to escape, drawing lines in the sand, marked with blood red tape. The lights turn in yellow on my night drive back home. Should I speed forward or gaze back to see how far I have come? I remember trying to recall what it felt like to feel normal. My memory doesn't always serve me the best. So what better way to remember than to tell the story in reverse? Some nights are hard. I know I'm strong, but sometimes we can have a vision for our lives, for how we think they'll be, but soon you will discover it's the heart that really leads. We think we are in charge, and in a way we are, but once you've felt love's strength, there's no lowering that bar. Gold is not what makes you rich, and neither are the mansions. A house will never feel like home if you don't take any chances. Let your heart find solace. Find your roots and grow your branches. We are, we are the art, and earth, it is the canvas. At the end of the day, I grab my pen because when all else fails, I write. Trying to turn my feelings tonight into decent verse. I guess I should explain first how our conversations felt rehearsed. Like we are some bad actors in some dumb movie about love. The kind I'd never go see, at least not intentionally. 
My ceiling knows it all too well when my body hits the bed. It knows tears could likely fall from the mess inside my head. I forget the last time anything made sense to me. Like, can I make something of this pain or is it lost on me? Trapped inside my head is the daily battleground. But man, on days like this, I'd gladly let them knock me out. It all becomes too much sometimes, like it's more than I can handle. Just when I feel like I may have control, my brain erupts and I'm thrown back into a scramble. I've learned that the most unforgivable thing that we can do to ourselves is allow the opinions or criticism from others stop us from becoming the evolved person that we can become on the other side of our battles. We each have so much to offer society, the planet, and each other, yet we run around afraid of one another because instead of trying to understand someone who is different than us, we all hide behind a mask. Fragile pieces of myself chip off and rearrange. The hardest of my moments assured I couldn't stay the same. Growth is produced by changes and often birthed through pain, but it turns out not a single tear will reach the ground in vain. There were moments I disconnected from the world and from myself. I took every memory that held me back and bid that pain farewell. With me, I'll take the lessons earned and kept within my shell, chose not to let the fear control me. Instead, experience served me well. The world outside distracts you from the universe within. Faith means believing in the unseen love that seems impossible in the world we live. Too many with their hands held out, not enough willing to give. Love and pain feel no different, regardless of what country you live. We've found many ways to judge each other by money, looks, and by pain, as if your financial or social status affects the value of the blood flowing through your veins. Addiction, the devil's disguised love, instant gratifications right now. In a world that tries so hard to make you numb, it gets harder to see how it would get better anyhow. I see faces glued to phones all day, but if you look up, you'll actually see. You'll find yourself when you lose the standards of who they tell us that we should be. We're taught to fear our neighbor based off of skin and gossip, so we never open up our hearts. We've been so programmed now to block them. Fear and love aren't enemies because love truly understands that sometimes all we can do is get through the day, making the best play out of the cards in our hands. Suffering here seems to bring shame, yet through my afflictions I uncovered my depth Add up each bruise that resulted from all of my choices. I still have not one single regret. I have no regrets. If I did, it wouldn't be me fully accepting the person that I am today. Without each decision, each day, each single word, one little thing could have changed everything. That being said, while I have no regrets... I do have scenes that are hard to look back on because I am not proud of who I chose to be in those moments. Nobody is perfect, and mistakes are generally part of our everyday life. I do believe that it undeniably is how we choose to recover from our mistakes and what we are able to learn from them that shapes our character the most. These lessons and life exercises are a major factor that determines how we morph from adolescence into adulthood. Feeling broken doesn't mean that I won't heal. I need to pick myself back up and realign with real. Shattered just ain't the word for what happened to my heart that night, knowing that I'd gladly spend forever by your side. I have a shield for others, but your bullets go right through. All I need here tonight is one reason not to miss you. Steady my heart because it's crawling. 
ripping its parts across the floor. The inner me still wants to find you, to ask you if you're really sure that it isn't me to set you free. I believe there is a significantly large difference between any type of pain versus pain from love. Pain leaves you hurting. Heartbreak leaves you shattered. I've been down and out, been struck down, jumped right back to my feet. So why is it then that I can't breathe since you've walked away from me? My heart is still on fire, but now I feel the burn. All alone inside my head, you've been my hardest lesson learned. I need more time so I can heal, shake off all the numbness, make me feel, I just want to feel alive, not all well put together, dead inside. I make excuses to myself how this pain is all my fault. That way you won't have the option to douse my wounds with salt. My heart was on my sleeve before. I keep it hidden now. Nearly breaching the unbreakable, you might as well take a bow. With time, some memories have been forgotten. Still doesn't mean I need you now. The bold new me has found safe ground back inside her shell. And I'm raising the gates. Not that you can show you care anyway. I want to scream at the very top of my lungs. What good is it if nobody cares? I'll just be here silent until anything makes sense. I just want to feel alive. No more well put together, dead inside. Well put together, dead inside. Ever since I can remember, I have always felt like an outsider. Like everyone else in the world was all in on some inside joke that I'm not a part of. I spent a good amount of my life being extremely identity crisis confused and frantically searching for what I would never find, a place that felt like I fit. So I write. I want my writing to be meaningful. I want my writing to have the potential to help others and to inspire change. My writing is the safe place that I've created for myself in which I will always fit and where I can always get myself back on the path of healing. They say it's written in the cards and maybe even in the stars, but when I show you all my scars, will all that still be true? I'm not always sure who I am, but I know who I'm not when you're gone. Torn in two, my heart ravaged. I'd still give you all of me that I could salvage. That's one thing I know to be true. There's no being me without you. Rock bottom was our starting point, but even that's besides the point. All that matters now is how we both feel. No one holds a candle to the fire. When our eyes met, I've never been higher. All of my walls have begun retreat. I'll follow you win or defeat. That's one thing I know to be true. There's no being me without you. In my life, I've been known as a fighter. When they douse me out, I'm back ten times brighter. I could find you in the darkest of night. Of shining armor, you are my knight. Me without you, it ain't right. That's one big thing I know to be true. I forgot how to me without you. I learned how to mask at a very early age. In non-dictionary terms, masking is when you realize you have no freaking clue who you are, and so you strategically pick and choose pieces from other people's personality, character, identity, traits, speech, etc., and adopt it as your own. This can happen for many reasons, but I think the reason it originally began for me was because it just seemed like who I was wasn't being received as I had intended. I thought that I must not understand feelings the right way, and so I studied and studied people until you could put me in almost any situation 
and I could fill in the pieces of me that were previously quote-unquote missing without batting an eye. I had become a master masker. This may be super hard to understand unless you've been through it. Hence why I write. I agree that all the world's a stage, and we are merely actors. But instead of allowing the show to play, we're marionettes being pulled swiftly backwards. Controlled by an invisible hand, the eye cannot plainly see. We don't have to accept when we're told that this is how the world must be. Moving swiftly along to follow up on my previous thoughts, I truly believe that beauty can be found in anything, even in the ugly, mucky waters of the BS in life we must walk through. Art is taking the intangible feelings and emotions within your heart and soul and creating a visual or tangible representation of affections that are too deep to be spoken through words and too powerful to be undermined by silence. Some say that love should look one way, like directions from a book. But once you merge from two to one, things aren't always how they look. Love is messy, and sometimes it's hard. But nothing good ever comes easy. Still, every day your heart flutters, and you'll say things that are cheesy. Real is when you choose to never use love as a wall. Lay your heart upon your sleeve be willing to risk it all. Finding comfort in their touch, no matter how hard you fall, by their side with fierceness when it's time for swords to draw. Love's road is bumpy and winding. We all carry pain from our pasts. Real is when you see hope in their eyes, a silent promise their light in your life won't pass. Unspoken understanding of one another's heart the first thought in your mind every time you part. See, love isn't only all there is, but it's all that there should be. Molding two hearts together for all the world to see. When that day comes and we will all come to pass, the greatest achievement of your life will be the love you've built to last. At this point in my journey, I have come to understand the importance of alone time. Alone time is a part of my life that I truly need and highly value. However, life means so much more when you have a well-intentioned partner holding your hand walking right beside you. You're equal. The reversal of that, however, walking beside the wrong person and allowing that relationship to outstay its welcome will more than likely end in ugliness. In the world I know, we push away each other, programmed to be enemies instead of sisters and brothers. In the world I know, the children stand no chance of a future worth fighting for. Either they're exploited on the internet or placed in a cage with hundreds more. Either way, This is a moral low that we have never experienced before. The world I know, we watch our leaders lie, then in the same breath tell us to believe them or we'll die. All the while you can hear screaming mothers cry, because when they bravely fled to safety, they lost their kids with no goodbye. The world I live in, we refuse to see the beauty, like walking with glasses, colors of rose, except this time the wine was poison. And when we speak, out the venom flows. We choose to keep the glasses on, even when they're altering how we interpret what we see, because it's easier to follow the majority than to fact-check for yourself and maybe disagree. The country that I live in would love to lock you in a cage. Don't let them catch you demanding change or asking them to stand by the untruths they've arranged. Once they get you in there, you'll be surrounded by the others that were thrown away by a broken system that will likely never recover. 
I want to live in a world where we make people better. Notice their storm and lend them our sweater. Adding rain to the swimming pool will only make it wetter. Just as speaking love into each breath can only make our world better. The world I live in, fear, overpowers love. The state of our mind determines who and what we'll become. If we run around scared because they tell us to be, we're giving up on our dreams and desire to be free. The world I live in, we're distracted by so much. It's easy to forget that life could change with a single touch or from a conversation with someone with whom you haven't spoken too much. You'll notice we're all broken and meant to be each other's crutch. We hate to accept we're all connected. Then we'd have to admit that our judgments are wrong. The more different they make us feel, the less likely we'll be strong. Why allow them to keep us separate based off of color, money, and social standing. Misery loves company, and you're in for a non-cushioned landing. The world I want to live in is like the one I live in now, except we all put down our differences and fix this shit somehow. Leaders need to be leaders and stop stirring up more trouble. They want us to light the fires so they can strand us in the rubble. It's not senseless to believe that you can make a change by being the change you wish to see. Mother Earth is begging us to wake up, fierceness of her power put on display for all to see. The person that you're being now is not the one you need always be. Imagine if the next step in the human evolution began through you and me. When we realize we have toxic people in our lives and make the decision to grab the scissors and matches to cut those ties and burn those bridges, we take back our power. It's not good enough to accept anyone willing to act like they love you. Anyone who does not have the absolute best intentions for you in your life needs to no longer hold a spot in your life. Quick and easy like that. Just do it and be done. Humans are meant to adapt to the conditions around us. However, be aware to not over-adapt to the point of letting someone treat you crappy just because you are where life says you're supposed to be. Comfort zones will never generate a sense of fulfillment. Looking through the rear view, driving 40 while the night fall. I saw the demons chasing me, knowing we'd play hardball. Everything not made of love, go and let them destroy it all. My foundation will remain, win, lose, or draw. And I will always rebuild. Every step forward in my journey has come at a hefty price. I sketched so many lessons into my brain to the point that it basically stopped remembering anything else. My thoughts became consumed with the light that I know is there to share, abundantly. My mind focused on how to let it be seen, when it is kept hidden by so many powerful people. Doing the right thing usually isn't the easier of options. As my mind struggles to unstrain, I fear only in chaos do I ever feel seen. Karma afforded me no mercy, and the mountain challenged my every step. Exhausted, I stood with my hands in petition, praying, God, please help me through what comes next. I came to a fork in the road, and all the paths said, Turn around, these roads are full of hazards. The world that we are living in will twist your mind inside out and backwards. Contrary to what it may look like, no, our government isn't just a group of bad actors. The way you live your everyday life, they've chosen all the factors. We've stopped seeing each other eye to eye because we must constantly be checking backwards. To protect our loved ones from the dangers resulting from humanity's low standards. 
It's not only money that is needed. We need someone who gives a shit. Not in themselves and the power they hold, but in their ability to inspire change from it. So often the wrong people are given a platform and they won't use that foundation for good because we live in a world that programs us to not exhibit compassion as we should. They create the escalating problems and on any progress they stand mute. We've got to come together and give these prideful politicians the boot. At the end of the day, I can look at myself and be proud of who I am. I refuse to be a pawn in their vile worldwide plans. In the end, God will prevail, and the last will then be first. This time, it won't be our side of the battlefield questioning why we're cursed. We become better when we choose to grow through our pain, not just go through it, focusing on the worst. Emotional pain is sometimes more than I care to talk about. You can bandage up a scrape, but what if it's way deeper? A cast will help a broken bone, but you may still wind up weaker. What do you do when the pain is deeper? A pain that won't stop when you close your eyes. A pain that you hide from others wearing a daily disguise. Not a mask to be fake, just one so that they can't see, the brokenness glowing from inside of me. They can restart your heart if you have an attack, but nothing attacked, it's like a piece of me lacks. Like I know a soul is in there, but I am sure that it's not whole. This pain is like lightning which I cannot control. It's an ache that won't stop aching, an eerily silent calm, a drama in the making, if I'd only let it out. Either you're like us or you don't get it. There's a war inside our minds, one that doesn't move on when you've left broken fragments behind. We pick up fragments that others have had. Perhaps they left them there for us or something like that. We use all these pieces to build up a wall. We don't realize we're locking ourselves in at all. Like quicksand, our problems go from bad to worse. Some of us bounce forward, and some fly in reverse. The soul is as real as anything else in or outside of us in this world. A soul is you. A soul is everything. Without that soul... The energy would not exist. You would not exist. So then, why do we argue about our differences when... There are examples everywhere of how we're supposed to be. Bees pollinate flowers with love, yet fend off humans defensively. We will reap all that we've sown and pay the cost expensively. Because who are we to decide... Who belongs and who does not? We leave people and places worse off than we found them, then claim it's peace and equality that is sought? Love is the only treasure that cannot be sold or bought, yet we throw away each other, often without second thought. In the beginning, there was life and nature, and since then, we've never needed more. We were supposed to build with each other, not construct walls that lead to war. Does anyone really still comprehend what all of this fighting is even for? When there is chaos and confusion on the outside, look in. They can get your body but never your mind, unless you allow them to. The soul is the guide many choose to live without. To dig that deep, you have to be brave, walking your ego straight to its grave. Each season of your life demands a different you, a phoenix that's arisen from the battles we're due. We often carry mountains we were meant only to climb. It's not a race against one another, it's a race against time. 
learning not to fear the evil, because the shadow in the valley is mine. Each one of my demons I dismantled in due time. We only stay in the dark when we choose to conceal our own light. The smallest of stars can still shine bright, lighting up the night. The person you were is unknown to who you now are. You can overlook the growth when focused only on the scar. Each one of us must face our fire. We need to burn to learn to heal. You either come out as gold or ashes with no chance for an appeal. We waste our days in selfish ways instead of healing a world that is broken. We live through our phones, and that's even how most of our words are now spoken. So many people just want peace, but they won't let us try it. When the system clearly doesn't work, that's when we must defy it. Nothing good comes when we care more about our differences than what makes us equal. We were supposed to learn from Hitler. There need not be a sequel. Saving ourselves is our own duty. There will be no help from the rich and snooty. It's time to wake up now, America, the sleeping beauty. It almost started to seem as if the chaos of the world was on the same roller coaster ride that I was. Even though the world around me closely matched the one within, full of mayhem, this is sometimes when I get my best writing done. There's nothing more frightening than having your dream come true. All the preparation is completed. Now it's finally up to you. To take in every moment, find joy in every scene, running solely on emotion, no need for the caffeine. Recall each lesson you have learned. Except now, you're also the teacher. You start to feel as if you're shifting into an entirely new creature. Every tear and every step that led me here to this, knowing what I do now, there isn't one I would dismiss. Life's not meant to be easy. You must find a way to make yourself proud by searching for what your gift is, then sharing it with all and love out loud. This is a little thank you note to you, the listener. I would like to thank everyone who is listening to this today. To learn how identity is just a costume and all the world's a stage. This would lead to reason that inside we're all the same. Yet if we keep fearing our differences, things are never going to change. We can no longer ignore the injustices and the racism on the screen. Honestly, in 2023, our children shouldn't even know what racism means. It should be so far past discussion, so far out of sight. If the whole world was colorblind, we could finally see things right. People filling their hearts with so much hate that there's not much room for anything more. You don't need to have a gun to be on their side of the war. Verbally, we're abusing each other, creating a world that our children shouldn't even hear. It shouldn't be one another that we deeply fear. I'll just leave this here. Humans have built a world designed to crumble at the feet of our greatest fears. Then, we're programmed to believe that our greatest fear should be our differences. The same differences that were meant to bring us together with diversity have become the very match that will light the road to war if we don't slow down, observe, come together, and act as one whole body of people. After you've been kicked down more times than you can count, You learn to insulate, take your fears, and lock them out. We push away anyone liable to learn our secret that the demons in our heads don't just stop when it's convenient. It's not the drugs that make an addict. It's the need to just escape, run far away from trauma, 
bust right through the caution tape. Each of us will make mistakes. Each must take a fall. Pain binds us all the most. Take your turn, then pass the ball. The courage deep within your heart, you'll need out on your sleeve. But just be careful who you hang around, because many will deceive. They'll kick you when you're down, just to raise themselves up higher, thinking life's a competition, and revenge the multiplier. We need to stop deflecting unhappiness onto those who don't deserve it. Each of us with a beating heart should find a way to serve it. We're too caught up in the day-to-day, but when you stand back and be observant, all we want are real human connections, not wars planned behind closed curtains. Over 2 billion names on Facebook, yet into another's eyes we can't look. YouTube a few billion more, but family dinner has become a chore. We wonder what's up with our kids but on their potential, we put lids. We let media from socials raise the youth. Now Instagram is where they look for truth. Then there's this app called TikTok. Let's hope its existence will soon stop. Our lack of morals is reaching the tip top, and we're hanging off the edge. We can microblog on the Twitter and read about what made the popular adults bitter. I'm pretty sure words can be litter, and this is where we type them to stay. We have an entire generation with photo albums full of their own face. When did we stop looking inside? Our shallowness has reached levels of disgrace. Snapchat will hide your secrets, and probably we chat too. But when will we learn what's important and change our point of view? We are here to serve each other, not focus just on you. What love will you look back on when your time on earth is through? The best way to get to know someone is not to check out their profile and form an overly superficial relationship relying on Instagram pictures and robot dances. TikTok, it's time for this to end. You are not the sum of your greatest mistakes. It's not you that is broken, it's the system that's in place. Instead of helping each other on a case-by-case base, we demean those who need us and throw people away. We have people locked in cages in which you wouldn't house a dog. If you can't see what's happening here, put your glasses on defog. Speaking of smoke clearing... I'd like to make a little toast. I'd like to make a toast to everyone that's doubted me. It was that pressure that ended up rerouting me. I don't know where I'd be today had that pain not caused a sprout in me that enabled me to outlast each one of you that doubted me. To those who wished my downfall, I'm not sorry for your loss. You picked the wrong side of the field as the refs threw up that toss. As the journey came full circle, I never once put down my cross. My plan to earn respect was to never avert from my cause. Now we come to those who physically played a part in taking my plans so far from the start. I detested you at moments, but now it's clear to me. I got exactly what you didn't want. My success, a guarantee. If I said that I would do it, you know that it was done. Not a single of my problems that I tried to outrun. I battled all these demons in real time, face to face. No matter how unfair it felt, I've led with dignity and grace. Moving on to those who talked behind my back. It's because of all of you I discovered how much strength I had. Not a single set of arms to hold me when sad, but the perspective I have gained from this makes me forget feeling mad. Collectively, you thought you could break me, each hitting with your worst. 
had me questioning what I did, causing me to be so cursed. Once I wiped off the dirt that you each threw in my face, right then we all saw clearly how I will not be replaced. After that brief interlude, back to the show. Life is a give and take, an attempt to balance the pointed tip of a triangle on the edge of a cliff with some sense of stability. I know for certain that everyone carries some type of pain. It is the most widely experienced feeling that could connect us all deeply. That is, if we chose to allow it. However, many times we are taught to hide our pain, either for our benefit or the benefit of another. This is detrimental to our progress as a whole, because... We learn more from one another than we ever could from books. We are vastly interconnected, regardless how it looks. We are meant to live as equals, but some refuse to see, if we could all come together, how peaceful it could be. We are focused on the material, technological world that we can touch with our hands and see with our eyes. We have forgotten why we are truly here. Life is so much more than you used to believe. True love isn't hard, we're just here to practice, to learn who we are and what the best way to act is. You can't heal till you've broken. You can't grow till you've learned. Future you will blossom from the lessons you've earned. There would be nothing to gain had there been nothing to lose. Your destiny depends on the path that you choose. I will see you soon for Act 2.